Hey everyone, I am out in my studio. It is like Sunday. Sunday. The sun is just going down and some rain clouds are moving in. Oh my gosh. Unless you live in California, you can't understand how exciting that is. It was warm today considering that it's supposed to be a rainy night. But I can feel it. I have the window open. I can, you know, there's that feeling when the rain's coming. It's, there's a smell and this... I don't know, this this vibe you get when it's gonna rain. And I wanna feel all of it. I am painting this little tiny circus baby's head. It's so cute. This baby has such a tiny head. It took me hardly any time to do this hair painting. I think this is a, like three layers of hair paint, maybe four. I have been really bad about editing videos lately. I was on a doll forum and somebody said, hey, what's going on? Are you still making videos? And I said, yeah, I am. I'm just pulled in so many directions. My real boy Pinocchio went off to the art show. It was so much fun. I got to be interviewed by like the local newspaper. That was really nice. Lots of people came. It was really a good time. There was a drummer there. And um, because, you know, we're still all masked indoors, the gallery owner made it fun and kind of challenged us to be creative with our masks since it's, you know, almost Halloween. And she gave out like a really beautiful bottle of wine to somebody who was the most creative. Once the show was over, some of us kind of stuck around and um, ordered some food and sat outside and, you know, enjoyed the evening. It was a nice warm evening. The person who provided the music was a music therapist and his instrument of choice is percussion, drums, and he he was excellent. It was so much fun. He was so much fun to talk to. Really cool dude. We ended up, all of us who hung out afterwards, ended up booking a drumming circle with him. So we're probably going to do it either in the gallery with the doors open and masked, or we're going to do it masked outside. And he provides the drums and the inspiration. We'll see how it goes. Um, when it looked like, you know, things were getting better over the summer, and I thought, oh yeah, you know, it's and I start getting back to a little bit of normal. I did take, you know, two trips with my son, but once things started, you know, going the other direction, um, it was just kind of back to mostly staying at home here again and feeling terribly guilty about getting too excited too, too soon. But that's okay, you know, we're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. I'm gonna stay positive that things are just gonna keep improving. I um, got the two BJDs done. Put the pictures here so you can see them. By the time I edit this video, the YouTube video that McPherson's made will probably already be out. You know, sometimes you just work with people who are professional and kind and personable, and they are the real deal over there, I tell ya. They're just really nice people, really good people. Um, I've been buying supplies from them for a long time, and now I finally got to collaborate with them. I'm just kind of cleaning up around these lips a little bit. I put some pink on and I don't want there to be like a super clean, sharp, delineating line between these lips and this makeup. And that's what I'm calling it. It's just supposed to look like messy circus makeup. I kind of want it to, to kind of feather a bit. And I moved to studios right now where I'm sitting and it's got a door and a wall. And you know, it was, a good move from where I was just because I have all these windows and all this light and I'm super happy with it um, but again it was just getting too cramped so I kind of 
powwowed with my family and said, I need to take over the rest of this space. I branched out and that meant cleaning up the whole space, giving it a good scrub down, getting a table, getting some shelves that were inexpensive. I ended up scoring some really cool bookshelves at Ikea. Closest to me, and I don't know if you have an Ikea where you live in your state or your country, but it's this really cool store that sells like Scandinavian furniture that you put together yourself. I think a lot of people think that it's kind of cheapy furniture and it, you know, it isn't super expensive or like heirloom furniture, but it is nicely made and planned. It's smart furniture. That's what I think about it. Um, you know, if you're a person who like has your grandma's china hutch and you, you know, spent $10,000 on your living room furniture and you plan to keep it your whole marriage and all that kind of stuff, this isn't the place for you. It's a place for me. I get bored easily. As my family changes, I like my house to change. And I am one of those people who really likes moving furniture around and splashing on a new coat of paint frequently. You know, there's, there are ways to kind of freshen up your house without it costing a ton of money. But if I need, you know, to get a little piece of furniture or a little bookshelf or something like that, Ikea is the place. They're a good place for lighting and lamps too. And they're about an hour away from my house. And I don't like driving out there. And since COVID, they have um, contracted with like a third party delivery service. So you can get a quote and have everything brought to your house, kind of like, you know, Amazon. We didn't used to have that option and now we do. And I thought it was going to be terribly expensive because I had them bring four bookcases. They're all flat because you have to put them together and there are 8 million pieces to do that. And I ordered two table lamps, like inexpensive table lamps, uh, some candles for the winter. Um, oh, the little cubes that you stick into the book. But I thought, oh, that's going to be so expensive to have it delivered. You know, I it cost me like between $42 and $50 to ship a baby from where I live. My babies tend to be heavy. And, um, you know, shipping them to other states, it's expensive. It's gone up. And I thought, how much is it going to cost for them to bring all of this stuff? And I put it in a crossed my fingers and they said 42 bucks and I was like right on that's how much it would have cost me in gas to go out there and back so they brought it and I put it all together it took me a whole day to put all the parts and pieces together I got the room pretty much set up I was able to score a really cool table for cheap I think I paid 50 bucks for this really cool table and um you know, when you move things around and stuff, you tend to go through everything and weed things out. And I think I took two loads over to the thrift store of stuff that I wasn't going to use. I hadn't used in more than a year. I didn't really like that somebody else could use. And we have such an awesome thrift store where I live. It is huge. It is gigantic. And there is a line usually at least 10 cars deep of people donating stuff. So it's actively being donated to and people shop there and love it. And so I love to, to donate there. I love it that people reuse stuff, you know, it's not just sitting in a landfill somewhere. And I love giving new life to old things too. I go there all the time for stuff like when I bought my uh, son a desk at the consignment store, he needed a chair that would fit. And so I just went over to Savers and got one and painted it and put it in there, stuff like that. Instead of drop cloths, I will go there and they sell stuff like bedding, old bedding and stuff. And I'll just like get the ugliest sheets they have, absolute ugly sheets and use those for drop cloths. I get some cute baby clothes there once in a while, Halloween costumes, you know, stuff like that. Let me show you who I'm working on. I have the two BJDs that I did for McPherson's and I'm trying to decide what I'm gonna do with them. If I'm going to do, you know, a giveaway or if I'm gonna sell them. I'm just trying to decide. They are really cool and I could definitely sell them, but 
because I had never made them before, you know, they're, they're made a little bit rough. I mean, they're really beautiful and they're well made, but like I'd never made a wig before. And so it's not like the most perfect wig. And this is Marnie. She looks a little pale right now. Just do some darker layers. I kind of want to get a kind of another amber layer on that baby because this newborn sage. Isn't she cute? She reminds me of Kanan just a little bit. I wonder if these babies are related. I am going to assume that a lot of the bountiful baby babies are related, that they're the grandkids of the Pratts and relatives and stuff like that. If babies are being born in your family and you're in this business, it seems to be the obvious thing you would do is photograph the babies that are all around you. So I'm gonna make that assumption. I might be wrong, I don't know. Nothing wrong with it. I'd do the same thing. And so I let my son come in, my little guy, and I said, give me some ideas. What do you think? He's creative, he's cool. And I showed him the babies and he said, that one stays a regular baby. That one stays a regular baby. This one's a monster. This one has horns. This one, you know, and he just kept telling me what he wanted me to do. So I did what he asked me to do and he wanted them to have tails. So I said, dude, gee whiz, anything else? He said, nope, that's it. We're gonna have ourselves a little storm here. I didn't think this was gonna happen until Friday, but I must have misunderstood. It, bring on the rain. Baby is Holly. She looks a little scary. Um, I did modify this baby, as you can tell, per my nine-year-old's instructions. I've got the ears, the horns, this kind of a sea monster to me. So if you've seen the new movie Luca, this kind of reminds me of that kind of sea monster vibe, but I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to think it over just a bit. That baby also has a tail because that's what I was told needed to happen. So I did make a tail out of clay. That's the tail. I did not modify the limbs at all. I kept the limbs just the way they were. Doing is Stephen awake. Those are the type of horns that I did. And he's got the sharp ears. So I mixed three clays together here. And um, I'm just gonna experiment and see what happens. Hopefully it'll work out. He has kind of a furry tail. So um, I'm just doing a little bit of shading on that tail and then I'll, I'll paint it. But this is Sage four months smiling and I've got horns and sharp ears. Now, to me, this kind of looks like a little happy devil baby. You know, that cute little devil, devilish baby that's on like devil's food cake packaging and stuff. And I think that's adorable. My son thinks this baby just kind of looks like a happy monster. <laughs> he thinks I should do this baby light blue, but I'm not sure that's what I'm gonna do. Again, you know, sometimes I have a, a, an idea in my head and I see exactly what I wanna do. And sometimes I don't, and I just take it as I go. And that's what I'm doing here. This baby got a little twisty tail. Very cute. That is what ha is happening in my studio today. And because everything's changed around, I'm not under my pot rack anymore where I dry babies. It's off to the side. So it's a little bit of a longer reach, but I like not having it over my head because if I'm in, just sitting here inhaling all these fumes from the paint thinner, it's odorless, so I can't smell them, but that doesn't make it any healthier. It just means I can't smell the stuff I shouldn't be inhaling and I should be wearing gloves. I know, I just forgot to put them on. But the other night I was out there like making labels for stuff and putting things away and I got absolutely giddy. It was so much fun, I was just like, oh, I'm so excited, I'm so excited. No, believe me, I know how lucky I am to have it. I know a lot of people, they get a kitchen table that they have to clean off for dinner and then reset up to paint, you know, later. Or they have a corner of a bedroom or something. I know that I'm pretty lucky and pretty blessed to have access to this amount of room that I have. 
most especially since I have a super, super small house. I'm pretty excited and pretty happy and pretty grateful. And I can't wait for them to get the damn weight equipment out of there. And then I can um, get some other projects started that I have been holding back on, not Reborn related. I primarily do Reborns right now. I mean, it's the main thing I'm doing. It's where I focus a lot of my energy, most of my energy, but I still have other projects that I do. I have a greeting card project I have to do. I have a painting I have to do and a couple of other little oddball things that I need to get done. And I want to get started on Christmas babies pretty soon. And up Christmas orders start picking up at the end of October. It'll work out. It's going to work out. I'll just make the babies I can make. That's all I can do. I think this little face is so cute. I can't stand it. Oh, I so want to do a, maybe like a green. I can't decide. I still have all that green from Alphaba. I'm wondering if I should go for it. Oh, I wish this was live and you guys could say, go for the green, go for the green, or don't do it, don't do it, you know. Doggone it. I think I might. I do have a swamp green. I wonder if I could use that and mix a little bit of blue. Goodness, look at this. This is Pat Moulton. Is that how you say her name? I like it that it's just something a little little unusual. Really cute sculpt. It's one of those sculpts that is pretty versatile. You know, you can do a lot of things with it. it has a lot of possibilities. But I don't think I'm going to root the modified babies. So that will save me a lot of time. I will put hair on one or two of them, but just probably painted hair and maybe thinking. I don't know. Maybe I'll root. I, I don't know. I don't have a plan. Oh my goodness. Um, what other news do I have? I mean, I'm trying to avoid like current events because it's kind of hot button and I don't know if I want to have those conversations here. My goodness, I argue with enough people on social media and on YouTube about things that I feel passionate about. And I just don't think I want to do that here. I want this to be just like my mellow, my mellow spot where I can just hang out. But you know, during this time, it feels like everything is that. Making plans for Christmas, am I gonna see my family? Am I not gonna see my family? Um, I do have family members who are not getting vaccinated that I really wanna spend time with them and their kids. But I don't know. I want to respect their decision to not get vaccinated for whatever the reasons are. It's none of my business. But at the same time, I know that I have a hard time keeping my opinions to myself. And I don't want my family to fall apart because I can't, you know, just let things be. But some part of me worries, you know. I love them and I don't want them to get sick and they just had new babies and I just worry. I also don't want my kids to get sick and I don't want to get sick. Even though I'm vaccinated, you know, I can still come down with a mild form of it, which I'm not excited about, but I think it'd be okay. I just don't want to spread that to somebody else who might not be vaccinated or might not have an immune system that is as healthy as mine. That would make me feel horrible. And I don't want to lock down. I don't want to go into quarantine if somebody makes me sick. I hate that. I'm tired of it already. I mean, we all are, right? And I don't mean this to be hot buttony. However you feel, you feel. You got a right to feel that way. It's your life at the end of the day, right? And trust me, I have very, very strong opinions and I'm very vocal. If you're new to this modif modifying baby stuff, only do it on sculpts that you are okay with losing or ruining you know that you're not going to cry at night because you bought a limited edition sculpt from another artist for 
$600 and now it's gone, you know, don't, don't do that to yourself. Just make sure it's a, a sculpt that you're okay with modifying until, you know, you get the hang of it. I am still experimenting, you know, it's going to be a while before I feel super comfortable with it. And another thing to be careful with is some things get cleaned with water, some things get cleaned with alcohol, some things get cleaned with paint thinner. And if you mix up all of these things, like if I just cleaned this brush with alcohol and if I went to go use it on a baby, I might take paint off of a baby and go, what the heck is going on here? So I really need to keep this brush in a separate place so that I don't accidentally do that. I've done that with like my Mod Podge brush. I'll have, I'll accidentally clean it in my brush cleaner, which is okay. But then I'll try to go use that brush later and it gives me some weird kind of messiness. And I'm thinking, what is going on here? And I realize, oh, there's just like a residue of, of Mod Podge inside that brush and it's breaking up from the paint thinner and it's hidden in those bristles. And then I'm dipping it in, you know, um, Genesis and I'm causing all kinds of crazy business. So just be careful with your brushes. I am going to go grab that oven because I hear the rains. I don't know if it's, yep, I think that's the rain. I think the wind has turned to rain. So let me go grab that.